the ground handling of airships, the most important problem is wind. Airships are massive, and they present a huge sail area to the wind. For safe and efficient ground handling, the ground crew must be alert to the ground handling officer's orders. They must be thoroughly familiar with safety regulations and any pertinent weather conditions which may affect ground handling. In this film, you will see how airships are handled during masting in the hangar, undocking, unmasting, and takeoff, landing, and masting, and docking. First, masting in the hangar. The mast is moved to within 10 to 15 feet of the nose cone. The winch operator on the mast hauls in sufficient lines to remove the slack from the nose pendant. After the ground handling officer receives the ready aft signal from the petty officer aft, he makes sure that the airship is properly trimmed to meet the mast. If it is not, the man in the cockpit changes the trim according to the signals given by the ground handling officer. The ground handling officer then signals to the winch operator to take a strain on the hauling in line and orders the tractor driver to move the mast in slowly. As the mast moves closer, the top man guides the locking cup so that it will engage the nose cone on the airship. The mast is stopped and the winch operator is ordered to take another turn around the drum to pull the nose cone into the cup. After checking the locking lugs, the top man signals that the airship is locked on the mast. The ground handling officer orders the winch operator to slack off the hauling in line so that the nose pendant can be connected to the pelican hook. By means of the bottle screw, the nose pendant is tightened. And then the hauling in line is disconnected. The ground handling officer orders the nose handling lines to be secured. The airship is masted and ready for undocking. But before undocking, wind must be taken into consideration. Wind constantly changes, both in direction and velocity, and is the single weather element that makes airship ground handling hazardous. All wind directions relating to ground handling of airships are in reference to the hangar axis and the operating end of the hangar. There are three basic winds that we are concerned with. The down hangar wind which blows toward the operating end of the hangar, the up hangar wind which blows toward the non-operating end of the hangar, the cross hangar wind which blows toward either side of the hangar. In addition, there are quartering winds. There are the quartering down hanger winds and the quartering up hanger winds. Winds are important for two reasons. A moored airship always veins into the wind. And at the hangar, wind from any direction causes piling up, spill, and turbulence. When the wind becomes strong and gusty, these effects increase. With a down hangar wind, we have still another wind effect when the hangar doors are open. That is, backdraft in the hangar. 
Backdraft can cause an airship pier to kite and strike the hangar. Backdraft can be controlled by partially opening the after doors to establish a light flow of wind through the hangar. However, with the after doors partially open to eliminate backdraft, a quartering down hangar wind will cause bulkhead deflection in the hangar. A cross hangar wind causes turbulence at the side of the hangar. It offers no serious problem to airship ground handling. But up hangar and quartering up hangar winds cause spill and turbulence at the operating end of the hangar. Utmost care must be taken while passing through the turbulent area. The turbulence and winds coming around the corners of the hangar are likely to cause kiting. To aid docking and undocking operations, there are safety guidelines for each size and type of airship being handled. The radii of the arcs are equal to the length of the airship plus a margin for safety. Thus, the guidelines assure clearance of the tail at the opposite corners of the hangar. The intersection of the lines here is the point nearest the hangar at which the tail of the airship will clear both corners. Undocking. The ground handling officer makes sure that the path of the airship is clear of obstructions both on the hangar deck and overhead. He checks the hand flag for wind at the hangar opening and the streamer pennants above the hangar door for backdraft. In this case, the streamer pennants show a backdraft. The ground handling officer orders the aft doors to be partially open to reduce the backdraft. The backdraft is now under control. The handling lines at the tail of the airship have been connected to two mules. The petty officer aft gives the signal, ready aft. The pilot gives the clear to undock signal. The ground handling officer instructs the tractor driver to proceed to the side of the hangar favoring the wind. The mules, under the direction of the petty officer aft, move with the airship and control the movement of the tail. If at any time it appears that the airship is going to strike the hangar, the ground handling officer will stop the tractor. Far less damage will occur if the tractor is not in motion when the airship hits the hangar. This is the critical period of the undocking operation. And the airship remains in danger until the mast crosses the safety guideline and clears the turbulent area. It is always essential to reduce to a minimum the time during which an airship is in a potentially dangerous situation. As soon as the tail is clear of the hangar, the mules allow the airship to vein into the wind. When it is considered safe to do so, the mules are ordered to disconnect the tail handling line. The airship can then be moved to a designated area and prepared for takeoff. Unmasking and takeoff. 
For unmasting and takeoff, the ground handling officer directs the airship to the downwind edge of the mast. The takeoff path must be unobstructed and clear of end area. The ground handling officer gets the pilot's approval of the takeoff site. He then instructs the tractor driver where to take the mast after unmasting in order to clear the takeoff path. The nose handling lines are connected to the mules, which take position on each side of the nose of the airship. When the pilot is ready and assured the airship is properly trimmed, he gives the signal to unmask. Now the ground handling officer orders the top man to pull the lug. The top man signals, lugs up. The ground handling officer orders the man at the pelican hook to free the nose pendant by pulling the quick release. The mast is quickly moved away from the airship and cleared from the takeoff area. The mules maintain their position. They regulate tension on the nose lines to check sideward movement and keep the airship headed into the wind. Fore and aft movement of the airship is controlled by the forward thrust of the propellers and the reverse pull of the nose line. When the pilot signals that he is ready for takeoff, the ground handling officer checks the takeoff area again and directs the pilot to increase forward thrust. When the ground handling officer believes that the airship can maintain directional control, he signals the mule crews to release the nose line and takeoff is made. Landing and masking. The ground handling officer selects a landing location on the mast, which is clear of any turbulence and offers an unobstructed landing and wave off area. The landing party is composed of the ground handling officer, the ground handling chief, the flag man, two line handlers, and the ground handling mule. The mules are positioned at the downwind edge of the mast on either side of the expected approach path. The ground handling officer estimates the speed, attitude, static condition, and the effect of weather conditions on the airship during the approach. As the airship touches the ground, the mules move up on each side. When the airship is slowed down sufficiently, the line handlers take the nose lines to connect them to the mule. During this or any other ground handling operation, the men of the ground handling crew must never allow both feet to leave the ground. The mules vary the pull on the lines to keep the airship headed into the wind. The pilot regulates his engines as directed by the ground handling officer to help check the fore and aft movement of the airship. 
The ground handling officer now signals the tractor driver to bring up the mast. The tractor driver is alert for a possible signal to move the mast out again in case of an emergency. The nose pendant is attached to the hauling in line. The winch operator takes up the slack. Then the mast is moved in closer. The ground handling officer orders the winch operator to take one turn of the hauling in line around the drum. He orders another turn around the drum. When the nose cone is in the cup, the top man raises the cup to the vertical position. Having made sure that the lugs are engaged, he signals that the airship is locked in the cup. The ground handling officer directs the winch operator to slack off the hauling in line. The nose pendant is attached to the pelican hook. The bottle screw is tightened and the hauling in line disconnected. The airship is now mastered. To complete the operation, the nose handling lines are released from the mules and secured. Additional ballast is added. And after the auxiliary power unit has been put aboard, the pilot secures the engine. Docking. Before proceeding with a docking operation, let us look into some of the more important considerations for docking airships. Airships are always docked in the hangar tail first. A down hangar wind will produce backdraft in the hangar. Backdraft should be controlled by regulating the doors at the non-operating end of the hangar. A down hangar wind involves danger to the airship because a sudden wind shift can cause the tail to strike the side of the hangar. An up hangar wind causes spill and turbulence at the operating end of the hangar. Therefore, docking with an uphanger wind may cause the airship to kite when it is in the turbulent area. In preparation for docking, the mast is moved close to the corner of the hangar while the airship is allowed to vane into the wind. The tail is then pulled by the mules through the turbulent area. This movement will be aided by the wind coming around the corners once the tail of the airship has been moved past the corner of the hangar. However, the airship may strike the near side of the hangar if the tail movement is too rapid and is not checked. To dock an airship with a cross hangar wind, the mast must first be placed outboard of the safety guideline, but close to the upwind corner of the hangar. This allows the tail to be pulled into the hangar and still favor the wind as much as possible. Special care must be taken that the side of the airship does not strike the corner of the hangar. Therefore, as soon as the tail clears the downwind corner, the mast is moved toward the hangar center and into the hangar. Now, let's watch an actual docking with a quartering downhanger wind condition.
The ground handling officer signals the handling party when he is ready to begin docking. He has previously checked the streamer pennants in the hangar to be sure there's no backdraft. He directs the tractor to start moving the mast toward the upwind corner of the hangar. The mules with the tail handling lines move with the airship, ready to check any movement that might be hazardous. When the mast has been moved far enough upwind, the mules begin to pull the tail of the airship past the downwind corner and into the hangar. When the tail is clear of the side of the hangar, the petty officer aft signals clear to move into the hangar. The ground handling officer directs the tractor driver to turn the mast across the safety line and proceed toward the hangar entrance. As soon as the mast has crossed the safety line, it is essential to accomplish the docking operation as quickly as possible because a sudden wind shift could cause the airship to strike the hangar. Once in the hangar, the airship is positioned, unmasted, and properly secured. You have seen the most important aspects of airship ground handling. The safe ground handling of airships depends upon the ability of the ground handling officer to estimate the situation correctly, to give the correct order. and safe ground handling depends upon the ground handling crew's knowledge of correct procedures and upon their immediate reaction to the ground handling officer's orders. 